Yahushua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. <clears throat> dark, she's dark. Uh, go grab me a cup of water. Look, I need a cup of water. Uh, yeah, three water. Go big, daddy. Okay, what's your sister? Okay. I'll drop it. This is John chapter 6, verse 43. Yahushua therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him at the last day. Right? He says it's impossible to come to the Messiah unless the Father who sent the Messiah first draws the person who's trying to come. Eli, share. So the only way to get to the Messiah is the Most High God, the Father, has to draw you first. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. All right, then another thing is, it's written in the prophet that anybody who's drawn to the, the, the Most High, who's drawn to the, to the Son, it has to be taught of Yah. Right? So the only way you can get is you have to be drawn. And anybody who is drawn and ends up with them, they have to be taught of Yah. Alright? Keep going. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father comes unto me. So that means after you hear and you learn, you got to do both. Right? You got to hear and you learn. After you've done both of those, then you come on to the Father. Yes, so I'm watching. What's wrong with you? You got to have a seat. Stop making all that darn noise. All right? So we look at it. There's only one way to get to the Father. You got to be drawn. And after you're drawn, you got to hear the word and you got to learn the word. Right? Then you end up coming to the Son. Right? It's, imp it's important for us that we understand that order. Right? We, it's, it's good for us to understand it before we even, you know what I'm saying, start start making moves. Right? You look at Yahweh Shua, he, he stopped the multitudes. He said, listen, before we even go any further, let's just talk about a few things. Right? Grab uh, grab Luke chapter 24. I mean, I'm sorry, Luke 14, uh, verse 25. This is Luke chapter 14, verse 25. That's how you do. That's how you do in the little churches. You know what I'm saying? You, put, you got the, you got the, you know, they got the, the other room. You know what I'm saying? When they expand it, they put a TV in there, and you watching the, you know what I'm saying? You watching the sermon on TV inside the church. You know what I'm saying? It's, they used to call that thing the overflow. You know what I'm saying? It's all in one room. We call it the overflow. This is uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man comes to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So it said, there went what? Excuse me, there went what? 
Multitude. Great, great multitude. Great multitude. I mean, it was a whole bunch of people. That's another way of saying it. It was a whole bunch of people going with him. Right? So imagine just a whole bunch of people just following Yahweh Shua. They like, man, what is all this about? You know what I'm saying? I want to learn more from you. Right? They heard him speak. They heard about him. They followed him. And they trying to get to where what he got. Then imagine him just turning around. And he turned around and he said, what? If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters, yea, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Right? He just turned around and told him, oh, before y'all take any more steps, let me just make sure y'all understand he said, anybody who don't do what? Read that thing for me one more time. Because I just want to make sure. You, I, I need, we have to be able to be there, right? We got to be able to understand what's happening. It's people anxious. You know what I'm saying? Think like a rock star, somebody that you really, really like. You really want to kind of go. They all following this man. Because they think, they, you know what I'm saying? He got something that they need. He preaching that good word, right? So everybody start following him. And the first thing he do when he see all these followers, he turn around and say, what to him? If any man come to me, if any man come to me, and hate not his father and, and mother, and you don't hate your father, and your what? And mother, and your mother, and wife and children, your wife and your children, and brethren, and your brethren, and sisters, and your sisters. Yes, in his own life also, and even your own life, he cannot be my disciple. He says, "No way you can be my disciple." Right? So he stopped him and let him know. Look, this is what it takes to be what you to to to, to get to where you're trying to go. He didn't wait. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't try to get him and, and please him first and make everybody happy. He set the standard right off the bat. Listen, if you want to follow me, this is what it takes. This part is hard, right? Watch what he say next. For which of you intending and to? Notice that he said you can't be my disciple. He didn't say nothing about no Christian, right? Because the Bible never taught us about Christianity, right? It never taught us how to be a Christian or. What's required to be a Christian? That's what we we came up with a bunch of requirements. You ask any Christian, they're gonna give you a this or different list. It wasn't required. We can point to the book and tell you what it what it means to be a disciple. He tell you flat out, this is what's required for you to be my disciple. We can point to the book with that. Show me, put it anywhere in the book and show me where it say this is what it takes for you to be a Christian. You can't be a Christian unless you this, that, and other. It's not in the book. You can't find it. You can find the word Christian. You ain't gonna find no requirements next to it. You ain't gonna find anywhere where Yahweh Shua mentioned it. He ain't had nothing to do with no Christian. That's crazy. All right? Keep going. What is it? Verse 27? 28. It's uh, verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sit is not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? All right? Yeah. I, got a, I got a dream of building a tower. He said, now which one are you going to start building it? And you don't even sit down first and plan it out and say, let me make sure I have enough material to make this tower like I want to make it. What's going to happen? That's happily after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, and all that behold it began to mock him, right? saying, "This man began to build and was not able to finish." Right? He said, "People gonna sit here and laugh at you." He gonna start building this big old tower. He realized, oh, "I ain't got enough to finish." Then people gonna start mocking. He's still gonna start laughing. At you. Right? He he telling that parable because he's letting them know, "Y'all following me right now." But how many of y'all really consider this is what it takes? Like, you have to turn against everything you've ever known. You have to give up everything you've ever known for me. Are you sure you're ready for that? You don't want to step into that. You ain't really got it. Because what people going to do? You don't get to change your life for a little bit. Then you're going to go back. And what people going to do? They're going to laugh at your butt. That's what these people do now. They try to have, they try to get out there and just be like, yeah, well, you know, I'm going to do this. And no, nah, I'm not trying to do that no more. They, they get laughed at. They don't have enough to finish it. They but get right back out there in them streets. Right? Look what else he say. Watch this. Or what king goes to make war against another king, uh -huh. sits not down first and consults whether he has able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. Uh -huh. Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassage and desire conditions of peace. So likewise... Whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. He said in the same way, if you don't stop caring about all this stuff, right? Everything that you have, ain't no way you can be my disciple. Notice again, he talking about disciples. He's not talking about none of this stuff these people talking about today. He talking about disciples. He trying to tell you how to get the real thing. All we gotta do is listen to the man. All we gotta do is listen to the man. All you gotta do is line up with the book. Zakat, relax. All you gotta do is listen to what the man say. Right? We line up with the book. It ain't no loser. How you gonna how you gonna lose? You line up with 
what the Most High God said. You can't. That's why we try to get back to it. He said, if you got, I mean, you going to tell somebody, I want to go to war. And then you get halfway out there and realize, oh, I ain't got enough for this war. Then you'll start wanting somebody to make peace with you. You already declared war. And then you on your way to the battle, you see they got way more people than you got. They be like, all right, let's make peace. How ridiculous do you look? Hey, man, let's scrap. Oh, no, nah, man. No, no, no. Let's just be cool. You're going to look ridiculous. Somebody going to want to knock you out just because. I mean, yeah, you're playing with me. I'll knock you out. But that's how we look. That's how, look. That's how, that's how a lot of us look when we, don't, when we don't stay committed to what we own. And y'all, she was being very clear. He said, you ain't got to be committed. I'm just letting you know this is what it takes. You do what you want to do. This is what it takes. Right? A lot of times we run our mouth asking the most high God questions. All right? We want to know. And we, we would like to believe that his answer is going to be something pleasing to us. All right? Lord, why can't this happen? Or why hasn't this happened? Why is it always this for you? Right? We like, to, we like to imagine that the most high God, you know what I'm saying, is going to say something to us like, oh, it's all going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? But what, what did he tell Paul? Persecuting me, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, "My grace is sufficient." Right? We look at that, and we kind of just we kind of majestize that thing right now. But you look at it exactly. You look at what he really said. Boy, shut up. You good is what he just told him. Yeah. Everything you all right? Ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. My grace is sufficient. He didn't give him nothing new. What's all, what you already had, what you already had before you asked the question, is sufficient. Who was it, Habakkuk? Yeah. Right? We can listen on, uh, give me Jeremiah. Give me Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12. Zakat, you never go with your brother. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Right, this is Jeremiah talking. Jeremiah said, look, I acknowledge that you're righteous, O Lord. You know what I'm saying? But let me holler at you real quick. You know what I'm saying? No, now don't get me wrong. I know what you're doing is right, but I still have some questions. Let's talk about these judgments of yours. Right? I still, I'm not doubting the fact that the way you're doing it is the right way to do it. But I just don't understand a few things. You know what I mean? So he, he asked a question. It's a vulnerable moment, right? Let's hear about it. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? He said, why in the world are these sinners prospering? Why are all they happy that deal very treacherously? These people do evil stuff, and they walk around here happy. I'm sad. He said, why is that, Lord? You have planted them, yes. You have taken. They have taken root. They grow, yes, they bring forth fruit. You are near in their mouth and far from their reins. Uh -huh. But you, O oh Lord, knows me. You have seen me and tried my heart towards you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. Mm -hmm. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? Mm -hmm. For the wickedness of them that dwell therein, the beasts are consumed and the birds, mm -hmm. because they said, he shall not see our last end. Uh-huh. Watch it. If thou hast run with the footmen and they Look, have wearied you. This is the most high God talking now. This is his answer. All right? The most high God, he come back and he said, if thou what? If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied you, uh -huh. then how can you contend with the horses? You see, Jeremiah, he asked all these questions, all these penetrating. Why do the wicked succeed, Lord? 
Why are they being treacherous and they walk around happy? We sad. They take us there. You plant these people and they thrive. Most of our God come back to him. He's like, I'm just trying to figure out if you running with the footmen and they hurt you. You know what I'm saying? They, they hurt your little heart. You running with the footmen. How are you supposed to run against horses? In other words, he let them know it's about to get a whole lot worse. We just got getting started. You complaining about this? Y'all have to understand that's how the Most High God is looking at this. You're not getting no answer from the Most High God. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me change it. <laughs> that thing's not happening. Most you're going to get is you good. My grace is sufficient. Suck it up. Keep moving. Do what I told you to do. Grab, um, grab Deuteronomy. Watch our law. This is how the Most High God weeds stuff out. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20. Uh, 21. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Deuteronomy chapter 20. Verse 1. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and see horses and chariots and a people more than thou. Right? Just like just like what Yahushua said. Who who wanna make a war against somebody unless he feel like, you know what I'm saying, I got enough soldiers to actually do the job. So now our law, this is our law talking to us now. The most high God talks to us about how we should go to war. So we said, if we go to war against a city, and what happened? And see horses and chariots and a people. More than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. Right? And the priest, they got to come to us. So we about to go to battle. We gather all together. The priest got to come talk, talk to us. Why do you think the priest got to come talk to us? Got to encourage the people. Got to encourage the people. Right? Why would they have to encourage the people? <laughs> Get them ready to do what they need to do. What happened the last time? They got discouraged. We sent out 12 spies. They came back and they discouraged the people. Most of our God said, you know what? Let me, you know what I'm saying? This happened again. Let me let the priest handle it. <laughs> right? He said, I'm a, yeah, we're going to put it in the priest's hand to go ahead and handle it. So now they got to encourage the people. Remember, we got a history. We sent out the 12 spies. 12 spies came back with, like, man, look, we like grasshoppers. We can't, we can't handle these people. It's a good land now, don't get me wrong. But nah, man, land will swallow us up. You know what I'm saying? We can't handle this stuff. So now the priest, he's like, look, we, we, we ain't doing that no more. That was Moses' idea. Yeah, not, Moses, I got like, uh, Moses, your, you know, Moses, I got always blaming on Moses. He already looking at me, and you take your people. You know what I'm saying? These people, you know what I'm saying, that you brought up out of Egypt. You know, that's a joke. guy. like, nah, I thought you did it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And you know, he, he looked at me and said, you know what? He looked at him, he said, you know what, uh, we're going to let the priest go ahead and encourage the people from this point on. All right, so that was our law. We about to go to war, priests got to come together. Got to give everybody encouragement. This is how it's going to go. Look what the priest said. And shall say unto them, hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Uh -huh. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Uh -huh. For the Lord your God, is he, it is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Uh -huh. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that has built a new house and has not dedicated it? What? So why do you think he asked this question? The officer had to come after the priest got done encouraging the people. So the priest said, Don't be afraid. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be good. The most high God fighting with you. Then right after the priest said that, the officers got to come. And the officers got to say, What man has built the house and hasn't lived in it? Right? Watch this. Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicated. After the priest said, don't be worried. Right? Don't be worried. Nothing to worry about. God fighting for you. Right? Don't even be worried about it. Right after that, the law tell us, the officer got to come to him and be like, hey, which one of y'all built the house and ain't really got the, you know what I'm saying, living that thing yet? Okay, your butt should just go home. You mess around and die. Somebody else take your house. That's our law. Encourage the people. Then you got somebody else to come along and be like, you mess around doc. Right? Watch this. And what man is it is he that has planted a vineyard and has not yet eaten of it? He said, You plant you plant a vineyard. 
Oh, yeah, you might want to take your butt home, right? Watch this. And what man is there that has betrothed the wife and has not taken her? Oh, you just, you just got me? Nah, you might want to go on hug. You mess around and die. Bro, right, let's see. Let him go and return to his house lest he die in the battle and another man take her. Mm-hmm. And the, office, and the officers shall speak further unto the people. And they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return to his house, lest his brother's heart faint as well as his heart. You remember the priest started off saying, Don't let your heart be faint. Most high God got it. All right? Officer come back and be like, Man, who faint-hearted? You faint? Your, your heart faint? Oh, no, go on. Go on. Go on. Go back home. You know what I'm saying? You mess around. Your heart be faint. You'll scare your brother next to you. Why do you think this is happening? This is weeding people out. Who didn't believe what the priest just said? If I know I'm winning a fight, ain't no harm gonna come to me. Most of I got fighting for me. Why do I care that I just got married? What difference do it make? I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go holler at my wife. We gonna win this war. I ain't gonna miss this for the world. Right? The officer there to weed people out. Exact same thing that y'all should did. Where do you think he got it from? Y'all sure came back. He turned around to all the people coming. He said, oh, y'all do realize that uh, y'all gonna have to give up mother, father, you know what I'm saying, brother, sister, you know what I'm saying, your wife and your kids. You know what I'm All that, you're gonna have to go ahead and let all that go, even yourself, if you want to be my disciple. Then he gave him the parables. He's doing the same thing. He's trying to let them know. Let me weed y'all out real quick. Right? It's not to discourage you. I just want to know who haven't been listening. Who haven't believed what's been said to them. Okay, let me get y'all out of here. Y'all mess around messing up for everybody else. Right? That's our law. That's where y'all should have got it from. That's where we pick up all this stuff from. It's wisdom in the things that he did. Right? Even if you look at, uh, go, so let's go back to Luke 14. Right? Let's go right back to Luke 14. We're going to slide up, go like to Luke 14, verse like 16. It's Luke 14, verse Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and set his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. He said, Come, because all things are now ready. This we just read further down the same chapter. Watch this. And they all with one consent began to excuse. Uh -huh. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, I must needs to go and see it. I must needs to go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Look, the officer asked him, officer, we about to go to war. Officer asked him, who bought a house? They haven't had, had a chance to live in it yet. You might want to go home. You notice, in this parable, y'all sure bid, he bid, he bid a, uh, a, an invitation, right? Come on, come on to the supper. He said, oh, man, you know what? I just got some land. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to experience my land yet. You know what I'm saying? I got to be excused. I apologize. I can't make it. Right? What else happened? And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I will go prove them. Uh -huh. I pray thee, have me excused. He said, I bought five yoke of oxen. I got to go test them out. He said, please, excuse me. I'm sorry. I can't make it. Right? What else? And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Mm -hmm. So the same thing. <clears throat> officer asked us, who, uh, who just got patrolled to a wife and have not been with her yet? That don't make no sense. You might as well go home. Right? Same thing. He like... Listen, man, I got a wife. Ain't gonna be able to make it. I'm sorry. All right? Let's see. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Uh -huh. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, "Go now, go out quickly into the streets and lanes to the city, uh -huh. and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the halt uh -huh. and the blind." Uh -huh. And the servant said, "Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room." Uh -huh. And the lord said unto the servant. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. He said none of them that were bidden will taste of the supper. 
Right? It's important that we understand it. Right? When y'all should turn around telling you, look, this is what it takes to be my disciple. Understand, he's weeding out. He putting the obstacle in front of you, like, yeah, yeah, go ahead and uh, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got what it takes now, right, go ahead and get a bite. He weeding out. Same thing our law was doing. When it's time to go to war, it's time to weed out. The priest gonna tell you what it really is. The officer's supposed to come through and weed you out. That's what the whole thing is set up to do. Right? Y'all sure here to tell you what it is. Satan come, weeding your butt out. That's what the whole thing is about. Right? Just a matter of, you know what I'm saying, what you gonna do? It's all for the, for the purpose of the most high God's good. So what you gonna do? What side you gonna choose? That thing gonna work out for him either way. Right? Let's jump back into Deuteronomy. It's Deuteronomy chapter 20. What verse is it? Eight. It's Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 8. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and fainthearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brother's heart be faint as well as his heart. Uh -huh. And it shall be when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. Mm -hmm. When thou comes nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. He said, when you come nigh, nigh to a city and you come against it, first thing you got to do is make peace. Right? You come to that city, you be like, listen, we come in peace. We ain't trying to fight nobody. We come in peace. Right? What's next? And it shall be, if it make if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. Right? If you make peace with these people, right? Not if you make you come to the city, you the first thing you gotta do is make peace. If they accept your terms of peace, remember in your terms of peace is Listen, we come in peace, y'all all have to serve us. No, our return in peace ain't like we equal nations, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll trade with you. Y'all gonna be woods. We'll be friends. No. He's saying our terms of peace, let's be very clear. You gotta serve us. The woodcutters. We're conquering you, right? Draw the water. Right? We're conquering you. This is how it goes. Now, if that's acceptable to you, let's just go on about our merry way. However, if it's not, let's hear about it. And it shall be, if it make peace, if it make the answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto you, and they shall serve you. Uh -huh. And if it will make no peace with you, but will make war against you, then uh -huh. you shall besiege it. He said, you've got to besiege it. Tear their butts up. Right, keep going. And when the Lord thy God has delivered it into the into thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord your God has given you. Right. So he said, if they want a war, though, you go through and you kill all the men. You lead the babies. All right, lead the lead the little kids, and you lead the women. You know what I'm saying? And they still gonna have to serve. But now, all the men gotta go. They go peace, everybody lives. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta serve us. Other than that, most like God still gonna give it, to, give it to us in our hands. But now, all the males gotta go. All the men gotta go. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, Notice which are not said. of the cities of these nations. He said, thus what you do to the very far off nations, not these. Remember, because he already told us, he about to tell us again, he already told us what to do with these nations that, that we're going into with the Canaanites. He told him what to do with it. He said, don't confuse it. Why did he tell us again? Watch this. But of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God does give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breathes. He said, don't save nothing. None of this applies. I mean, well, Yahushua came offering peace. Mm -hmm. Whoever accepted his peace definitely serves the Messiah. Mm -hmm. But when he comes back, it's war. Same mm -hmm. thing, because it's going to be the people that did not accept the peace. He is... Mm, so you mean tell me the same peace terms that's in our law is what's going to apply when y'all wish you would come through? Absolutely. You, 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 you ain't accept the peace before he gets back, then obviously it's war. You mean tell me that all this is according to our law? Everything you do. Yeah. What y'all think y'all reading about? Alright? This is what they told us don't matter. Done away with. Mm -hmm. Ain't going to be done away when the man get back. 
back though. The whole book is talking about him. Oh, you ain't accept my terms of peace. Okay. Gotta be war. Gotta be war. Alright? Keep going. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Parasites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee, mm -hmm. that they teach you not to do after all their abominations which they have done unto their gods. So should ye sin against the Lord your God. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in making war against it, to take it thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing the axe against them for thou mayest eat of them and thou shalt not cut them down for the for the tree of the field is a man's life is man's life to employ them in the siege mm -hmm. only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat thou shalt destroy and cut them down and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that makes war with thee until it be subdued right so here's our law telling us when it comes to war, what trees we can cut and what trees we can't. It was against our law to go cut down an apple tree for the sake of, of, of tearing down another city. He's like, no, that's, that's foolish. You don't do nothing like that. You got, you got a nice, perfectly good apple tree right there. He said, you don't cut that down for no war. Right? You cut down a tree that ain't got no food. You got a tree that's good for food. That, you know what I'm saying? You leave that thing alone. That's reckless. Right? This is our law. All right, keep going. If one be found slain in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee to possess it, mm -hmm. lying in the field, and it be not known who has slain him, mm -hmm. then the elders and the judge shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about them that is slain. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city shall take an heifer which has not been wrought with, and which has not drawn in the yoke. Mm -hmm. And the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer unto a rough valley which is neither ear nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley. Right? So let's, let's make sure we understand what, what we're talking about right here. What is it, chapter 21? Yeah. So this is chapter 21. So we don't understand what we're talking about here. So what what our law is telling us is, if you find, right, we walk out, this is, we're going into our new land, right? We start to establish our territories. Everything's starting to get smooth. But then we walk out, and we see just somebody just dead, Right? And we don't know who killed this person. He said, if it's a person that's in my city, right, I got to go get the judges, and we got to find out who's in the city adjacent to us, right, the city next to us, right? And then the people from that city next to us got to come out, and they got to bring a red heifer, right? Chop off the neck. We read about the red heifer already. So, you know what I'm saying? They got to they gotta bring the red heifer, and they got to take it to a place not only they got to take a, a heifer that hasn't hasn't had any uh, work put on her, right? Then they got to take that to a place where no crops have been put in the ground, right? Then they sacrifice the heifer, right? Keep going. Because it's not going to be no more food. And the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come near for them the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried mm -hmm. and all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley mm -hmm. and they shall answer and say our hands have not shed this blood neither have our eyes seen it he said our hands shall not they gotta wash their hands and they gotta say our hands have not shed this Neither have our eyes seen it. Right? We ain't got nothing to do with this dead man. Don't nobody know who killed him. You know what I'm saying? And I definitely didn't do it myself. Nor have I seen who did it. Right? Keep going. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel. For what purpose? Who, whom thou hast redeemed and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge. And the blood shall be forgiven them. Right? He said, don't put this blood on us. We had, we had to represent for our city. Like, listen, we didn't do this stuff. I don't know nothing about it. My eyes haven't seen it. My hands is clean of this man's blood. Right? It's talking about Yahushua. Who slayed Yahushua? The, the Gentile. We don't know who slayed the darn man. <laughs> grab, uh, grab Luke for me. Luke chapter 23. 
what they say, just a centurion or something? Huh? Because they ain't getting no names. Huh? We don't know who. Everybody was like, you know what I mean? Everybody trying to ease out of that thing. You know what I'm saying? We could have. Remember, the man got arrested, right? Right? So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Judas came, gave him a kiss. You know what I'm saying? And after that, the, you know what I'm saying? They came down, drew down on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? He said, you come out, you came out here, you know what I'm saying, with all this. I've been I've been teaching in the in the public places this whole time. Y'all gotta sneak up on me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? Right? So they arrested the man, they take him to the Sanhedrin. Right? That's our our people, our elders. We start yelling at them, you know what I'm saying, mocking them. You know what I'm saying? Asking them questions. You know what I'm saying? Slap them in the face. After that, our people didn't want to get him. Right? So you know who we took him to? Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. Go ahead and uh, give me verse 1. Whole book talking about the man. Watch this. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. Mm -hmm. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, uh -huh. saying that himself is the Messiah, a king. Mm -hmm. And Pilate asked him, saying, "Are you the king of the Jews?" Right. So he Pilate asked, asked Yahushua directly. Watch what Yahushua said with his smart mouth. And he answered and said, and he answered him and said, "You say it." Right. You said, smart darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? Look at him. Watch this. Then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, "I find no fault in this man." He said, "What?" I find no fault in this man. <laughs> Pilate, man, I ain't got nothing to do with this. Watch this. Keep going. And they were the more fierce, saying, He strives up, he stirs up the people, mm -hmm. teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Mm -hmm. Watch what watch what Pilate did. He said, Galilee, watch this. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. Uh huh. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, whom himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. Right? So he looked at it, he like, Oh, he's from Galilee. Oh, this ain't nothing got nothing to do with me. Going to Herod, that's Herod's jurisdiction. Matter of fact, Herod is in Jerusalem right now. Y'all can go see him he's right down the street. Got right on the rid of him, right? I ain't got nothing to do with this foolishness. Let's see what happened with Herod. And when Herod saw Yahshua, he was exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, mm -hmm. because he had heard many things of him and hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Mm -hmm. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Mm -hmm. And Herod, with his men of war, sent him at, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Right? Herod then was like, mm -hmm. I'm sending you back to Pilate. Right? So he's going back to Pilate now. Let's see. In the same day, Pilate and Herod Remember, were made. He went to our Sanhedrin. He went to our elder. Our elder was like, we can't do it. You know what I'm saying? We got to take him over to the Gentiles. Then he took him to Pilate. Pilate was like, oh, I can't do it. I'm taking him to Herod. Herod got him. And Herod like, I ain't doing this. Send him back to Pilate. Let's see what Pilate did when he get him back. In the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. All right. That thing brought them together. Grab, uh, grab, grab uh, Matthew chapter 27. It's Matthew chapter 27. Give me verse, <laughs> give me verse 19. Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For this I have Pilate's suffered wife. many things this day in a dream because of him. Right? This is Pilate's wife. So now Pilate heard from his wife. His wife was like, I have nothing to do with this man. He's a just man. Yeah, I suffered a whole lot dreaming about this. Right? Because of him. She tried to warn him. So let's see. Father, take that into consideration from his wife. Let's see what happened. But next. the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Yahushua. Uh -huh. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? Uh -huh. And they said, Barabbas. Uh -huh. And Pilate said unto them, What shall I do with Yahushua, who is called the Messiah? Uh -huh. They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. They said, Crucify his butt. All right, what else? And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? This Pilate, right? Pilate's like, For what? What has the man done? Right? Let's hear about it. 
But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Mm -hmm. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands. He did what? He took water and washed his hands before the multitude. He did what? He took water and washed his hands before the multitude. That sounded like exactly what we did when we had that red heifer. You find a man slain. He's like, nah, let me go ahead and wash my hands. I ain't got nothing to do with this. I ain't got nothing to do with what? Why am I? That wasn't us, nor have I seen who did it. Right? Watch what he say next. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. He said, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Clean yourself off. I ain't getting this foolishness on me. That's crazy. Right? He said, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person. Who else? What else? You see to it. He said, y'all see to it. Guess what they said? And then answered all the people and said, his blood be on us and on all our children. We don't know who killed the man. Right? We don't know who killed the man. It's John. It's John chapter uh, 19. Give me about verse 9. John chapter 19, about verse 9. You find somebody slain, you don't know who did it. Everybody got to wash their hands in that situation. First, the books say, first you got to search it out. Books say, first you got to search it out business and figure out, you know what I'm saying, do an investigation. If you come up in that investigation and close, you don't know who did it, it's all right, well, you go to the next city over. You know what I'm saying? You bring them out, bring their elders out. Bring the priest out. You know what I'm saying? Because the priest was given the authority in that situation. And after that, you know what I'm saying? You take the heifer, y'all wash your hands under the heifer. Right? And just say, hey, I didn't do it, and I ain't see who did it. Right? Once you do that, then you pray that the most high God don't count innocent blood on y'all. And on your city. Right? That was our protocol. And what you see. Take them, we take them to our people. They're like, eh, well, we got to take them to Pilate. We take them to Pilate. Pilate's like, man, I ain't got nothing to do with this. He from Galilee. Go ahead and take them to Herod. You take them to Herod. Herod looking like, mm, nah, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Take them back to Pilate. Right? Pilate looking like, listen, I don't find nothing against them, and nor did Herod. They like, crucify the man. Right? Pilate's wife tell him, listen, leave that just man alone because that man been giving me problems in my dream. Right? Then Pilate, he is looking like, man, listen, y'all do to it. Y'all see to it. Y'all want me to crucify it. Y'all see to it. I'm going to wash my hands in this situation. According to our law, he didn't even realize it. It's according to our law. What do you think the law was talking about? Talking about it was a, just a random dead man? No, there's only one dead man that's what I'm talking about. All right? Keep going. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and said unto Yahshua, uh -huh. Where art thou? From where art thou? He said, From where art thou? Right? He asked Yahshua, he said, Where are you from? Right? Because he's looking. Pilate's trying to kind of reason and put the thing. They want me to kill him. Politically, I, I kind of got to do that thing, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have some problems. But the man is clearly innocent. Right? So he conflicted. He's like, man, all right, what, what am I going to do? So he went to y'all too. He said, where you from? Man? Just talk to me. You know how you try to, you try to level seven. I'm like, yeah, all right, man, where, where, where you from? Just tell me where you from. All right? Let's hear about it. Then said Pilate unto him, speakest thou not unto me? Knowest, that, knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify thee and the power to release thee? Right? He said, oh, so you're not going to answer me. He said, don't you understand that I got the power to kill you or the power to let you free? Watch what Yahushua said. He gonna answer that one. And Yahushua answered, Thou could have no power at all against me except it were given to you from above. Who killed the man? Yahushua was very clean. He like, he looked like, well, your butt couldn't do anything except it was given to you. So now we gotta ask the question, who killed him? Right? What's next? Therefore, he that delivered me unto you has the greater sin.
say, like, most high God, the only way he's going to do it, most high God says, okay. All right? You can't even see it. Anybody got no evidence that y'all y'all did it? You know what I mean? So now you're just looking at it like, well, watch my hands in this situation. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who killed the man. He sure is dead, though. Then he wake up three days later. That's our law. All right? That's our law. Let's go back. This is Deuteronomy chapter uh, 21. Where we going leave off? Verse 8. Verse 8. This is Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 8. Watch what it says. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge, mm -hmm. and the blood shall be forgiven them. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God has delivered them into thy hands, and thou hast taken them captive, and see among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her. Now this goes back to what we were talking about before. Right? So before, when we went to war, we and, and we made the uh, we made the declaration of peace. Was that the, the cities in Canaan? Absolutely not. It said what cities? Cities that are far off. Far off. So if we go to far off cities, what do you think we're gonna run into? Are the Hebrews? No. Mm. So that means we are talking about Gentiles that's far off. We gotta make peace with them. These Gentiles. All right, we got to make peace with these Gentiles, and they got the option to serve us. Now, if they don't want to serve us, then we go to war with them, and they still going to serve us if the Most High God give it into our hands, right? So we would take the women and the children in that scenario if it was war. And if it was peace, we would take everybody. Now, we come back, and this law is further explained to us, and it says, if you see a beautiful woman that serves you, go ahead. And see among the captives a beautiful woman, and as a desire unto her that thou would have her to thy wife, then thou shalt have, be her have her as thy what? Wife. I don't know how that's possible because Hebrews can't marry Gentiles. I don't see. I don't see how the law saying that. We know that God say there ain't no interracial marriage. Why do these people teach this garbage? They say here they teach these people this garbage, not understanding our law. It tells us very clearly, you go to the far nation. I mean to the far, don't you deal with nothing close now. You go to something far, offering peace, you take them captive. Now, if you see one you like now, you know what I'm saying? If you see one, a beauty, you know what that tell us? Most like that, I think Gentiles are beautiful. Now, I mean, I would have said, that thing said, if you see a beautiful one, and you like her, let's see what happens. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, mm -hmm. and she shall shave her head and uh -huh. pare her nails. Uh -huh. And she shall be, and she shall put the raiment of her captivity from from off her, and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month. Uh -huh. And after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Uh -huh. And it shall be if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go where she will, but thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her because you have humbled her. Right? He said, you even got a tree. I mean, he's Gentile. He said, even if you want to sell you can't sell her for money. Right? You humble her. You can't sell her for no money. You let her go and you let her go for free. Right? Remember, she started off as a servant for you. You let her butt go for free because you humbled her. She bought her free. Again. If you want to just, you know what I'm saying, just switch up on her. You know what I'm saying? You let her go for free. That's a book. Right? These are the things that we look at in our law. If you take your time and you understand the law, you will be able to see very clearly how righteous the most high God is. These people just make a darn mess of it. Alright, keep going. What else we got here? Talk about you, just, you can't marry no gents out. I don't know what's wrong with these people. You get yourself what you like. Get yourself what you can handle. Most our God gave us that. If 
a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, uh -huh. and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, mm -hmm. then it shall be when, the, when he makes his sons to inherit that which he has, that he may not make his son of the beloved firstborn, make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Right? Who's this? Who's this to put us in mind of? Joseph. Joseph. Right? Remember, Jacob, Jacob had two wives, right? And he loved one. Books say he hated the other. Right? So we look at it and you say, okay, well, the law come back and be like, that ain't happening no more. Right? You remember he gave Joseph something special. What did he give him? Yeah, a coat of many colors. He gave him a coat of many colors. How did it make his brothers feel? God said, mm, nah, that's against our law. Right? A lot of our law, what it does, it come back and it corrects some of the stuff that we've seen in our past. Right? So he come back and nah, we're going to go ahead and put a law against out. Right? He said, firstborn going to be the firstborn. Don't just because, you know what I'm saying, you ain't fond of your first wife. That don't mean that you can just, you know what I'm saying, are fond of the wife that, that gave you your firstborn son. That don't mean that you can just come back and switch it up. You know, my firstborn going to be firstborn. Mm -hmm. Let's see what kind of force you, huh? So yeah, yeah. Let's see what kind of portion you got to get a firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has. Mm -hmm. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Mm -hmm. If a man have a stubborn... Hey, Yahweh should get out there before us. Right? He is born first amongst all nations. Right? Ain't that what it said in Corinthians? Didn't you say he's the first fruit? Right. I'm just trying to make sure. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what this could be talking about. You what? have a stubborn and rebellious son that won't do what? Obey the voice of his father. Oh, gracious. Okay, what else? Or the voice of his mother. Oh, man. What else? And that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. They wouldn't even, I mean, he won't even listen to him even after they whooped his butt. What up? Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him mm -hmm. and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. Uh-huh. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton, a drunkard. He's a glutton, and he's a drunkard. And what up? And a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. Everybody got to stone this brother with stones. And guess what's going to happen to him? He got to die. What else going to happen? So shalt thou put away evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. You got to do that to your son, the law said. What happened next? Okay, I, I, I don't know what could be coming next. And if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, and he... And if a man has committed a sin worthy of death, what? And he be and he be to be put to death. Uh-huh. And thou hang him on a tree. He, you gonna do what to him? Hang him on a tree. Oh, my goodness. His body shall not remain all night on, upon the tree. But How thou long? Shall, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. Oh. For he that is hanged is accursed of God, that thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance. Y'all sure he is hanging up on that tree? And then I remember, I think it said something like the third, what was it, sixth to the ninth? The sixth hour to yeah, the ninth sixth, hour. Sixth to the ninth hour. The ninth hour, because 12 was when he made it dark. Yeah, so it was the sixth, it was the sixth to the ninth hour, right? Sixth to the ninth hour, it went dark. Six, on the sixth hour, it went dark. It was dark since from the sixth to the ninth hour. Right? And then the man died. Then he got his butt out of there that day. Right? They're looking like, you know what, we got to get him down here before the even because the Sabbath is coming. You know what happened? They would have left him up there? The land would have been cursed. The land would have been cursed. It wasn't ready to be cursed yet. Right? According to our law, we gotta get this man down. Why do you think that was in the law? What do you think he's talking about with this rebellious son? <laughs> he was the rebellious son. He wouldn't do nothing that the father said. You 
You remember when uh, Mary and Joseph, you know what I'm saying? They was looking for the man. You know what I'm saying? Then he said, he said, I don't know what y'all looking for me for. Y'all know I was going to be doing my father's business. You were a billion darn boy. Don't you know we was trying to get you? Okay. Whole, the whole city. Wasn't the whole city trying to stone him? Whole city got to stone the man. Then they end up putting him on the tree. He, he did a sin that was worthy of death. What did mom and dad say? Grab uh, grab Luke. Luke chapter 7 verse uh, 33. This is Luke chapter 7 verse 33. According to our law, what did mom and dad say? He was glutton and a drunkard. You are a glutton and a drunkard. This boy is a darn glutton and a darn drunkard. I don't know where that came. I don't even know why that's in the book. You think we read about just some random son? You know, there's some random law against you. Know, what you got to do for your son? Call him a glutton and a drunk. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and ye say he has the devil. Uh-huh. This is y'all sure talking. He said John the Baptist came. He didn't eat, I mean, he, he didn't eat, uh, he didn't eat or drink, right? And y'all said the man has the devil. What up? The son of man has come eating and drinking, and ye say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber. A what? A gluttonous man and a wine bibber. Oh. A friend of publicans and sinners. What do you think the law was talking about? Whole book is talking about y'all, sure. He's the rebellious cat, child. That's why they had to put him out there, right? That's why the man had to be put, be put to death. That's why the whole city was trying to stone him. Right? That's why he had to be hung from a tree. Right? That's why they had to put his butt down before, uh, you know what I'm saying, before he even had to bury him that day. That's our law. The whole thing had to go according to our law. According to what the law foresees. It's the same law they tell us is done away with. Just take your time in this book. That's all we got to do. Take our time, look inside of the book, and try to understand it. Most of our God to reveal it to us. He's faithful to do that. It's not supposed to make sense all at once. Unless he say it's supposed to make sense all at once. Right? The, the expectation that he set for us is that it won't make sense. That we won't get it. That he'll be speaking to us in a different language. Or like, or with a stammering tongue. Right? It's important for us to stick with it, look at it, obey the word. He said two things you got to do. You got to hear and learn the word. If that's not in your protocol, if that's not in your priority, then I don't see how you're going to make it to the Father. you just killing a whole bunch of time. you just thinking that you're going to play patty cake, you know what I'm saying, come every now and again, read every now and again, study every now and again, learn every now and again, and just keep living how you live. That thing just don't make sense. All right? You got to have a consistency of learning hearing the word. And then you got to put it into practice. You, you ain't no way you're going you gonna to learn it without putting it into practice. Right? That's the only way that thing goes. Right? Any questions?